Thakur Vidya Mandir High School and Junior College welcomes all the 12th standard computer science students. Today we are going to continue with topology and we are going to learn a new concept connectivity devices. Topology, already we know what is a topology, the connection of all the computers together so that the network is shared. The connection of computers, nodes, transmission media and connectivity devices together so that their network is being shared. The design is called as the topology and we have learned about the two categories and it's the five types. The different five types are ring, mesh, hybrid, star and bus topology. So today let us topology. We are going to learn today tree topology. So what is a tree topology? All the computers, you can see here there are many computers. All, there will be n number of computers and there will be, the computers will be forming a group. The computers is going to form a group. So you can see here, I have a group of four computers and totally I am having five groups. And here, all the four computers which are there in a group will be connected to a hub. So the hub is a connectivity device which is going to interconnect all the four computers. In the similar way, the other four will be connected. So the hub here, which is connected in the tree topology, it forms the secondary hub. The hub which is connected in the tree topology forms the secondary hub. So you can see I have a group of four computers and all the four computers are connected to a common centralized device called as hub. Now all this hub will be connected to a common cable and this is the primary hub. All the secondary hub will be connected to a common cable. We consider it as a primary hub. You can see here how the connection is being done. Okay, in this way, the connection has been done in the tree topology. Now, in tree topology, for example, if the computer, here I have highlighted the hub in, hub in different colors. So, here I am having a orange hub. If the computer in the orange hub want to transfer within X to the other computer, then the data will be transferring to the hub and then to the other computer. If the computer which is there in the orange hub want to transfer the data which is there in the grey hub. So how what will happen? The computer will transfer the data to the secondary hub that is orange. From that it will be going to the primary hub that is the backbone cable and then it goes to the grey hub and then to the computer in the grey hub. So here interconnection of computer is also possible within the hub as well as out of the hub. So the data transfer can be easily done within the hub as well as from one computer to the other computer which belongs to the other hub. In this way the connection is going to take place. Now here the entire structure of the tree topology is similar like my tree. The backbone cable forms the stem of the tree and the computers, the group of computers form its branches. We can connect n number of branches in the tree topology. All the computers will be given equal importance. If one computer fails in the topology, the network is not affected. If hub fails, if the secondary hub fails, the other hub will be working and the computers will be working. But the main disadvantage is if the backbone cable fails, the entire network will shut down. So, these are the advantages and the disadvantages of my tree topology. Now, let us learn. Tree topology. It is a root node and all other nodes are connected to it, forming a hierarchy. So, what is a root node? It is nothing. It is the backbone cable. And other nodes are the secondary hub. It is also called as hierarchical topology. It should at least have three levels to the hierarchy. Ideal if workstations are located in groups and it is widely used in band connection. So these are the main functions of the tree topology. So here the root node is nothing. It is your backbone cable, the primary hub and all other nodes are your secondary hub. Advantages. Extension of bus and star topology. When you look at the structure, it is simply like my extension of your bus and star topology. Expansion of the nodes is possible and it is easy. We can expand in the primary, we can expand in the secondary also. That is in the primary hub you can connect some more hubs and in the secondary hub you can add more number of computers. Easily managed and maintained, error detection is easily done. Disadvantages is heavily cabled and costly. 
if more nodes are added maintenance is difficult central lab fails the network fails so these are the advantages and the disadvantages of the tree topology so tree topology you can see the tree topology is similar like my tree that is why we have the name tree topology the backbone cable is the stem the other secondary hub which are connected form the branches in tree topology the data transmission can be done within the hub also as well as from one hub to another hub also it is possible with the help of my backbone cable heavily cable when you are adding n number of moves what will happen there will be the cabling will be more and the cost will be high but the main disadvantage here is if the central hub fails the entire network shutouts these are few diagrams of your tree topology you can see here the second diagram is similar to the diagram that we have drawn as usual not only computers but we can also connect the connectivity devices together to form the tree topology next comes the point to point topology this is the last topology point to point topology is one of the simplest topology and the data transmission takes place at the faster rate and the easier way the reason is here only two workstations will be there and they will be connected via a cable so one station will be easily transferring the data to the other station so this is how point to point topology takes place in point to point topology we also have a point to multi point topology point to multi point means one workstation will be connected to the other workstation you can see the diagram one there will be one central node that is one point and there will be multiple users that is point to multi point topology point to point topology is very simple it is very easy to construct no errors are there the data transmission speed is fast but the main disadvantage is it is it can be used only for smaller area because the control nodes that is only two control nodes are used now let us point to point topology it is the simplest topology that connect two nodes directly together with the common link that is my cable the entire bandwidth of the common link is reserved for transmission between those two nodes the point to point connections use an actual length of wire or cable to connect the two ends but other options such as satellite links or microwaves are also possible so here in point to point topology we are going to make the connection between the two nodes via wires in case point to multi point topology especially we can use for satellite links we can go for microwave also for transmission of advantages highest bandwidth because there is only one two nodes having the entire bandwidth of the node very fast compared to other topologies because it can access only two nodes very simple connectivity easy to handle and maintain the disadvantages are the topology is only used for small areas where nodes are closely located this we have already discussed we can't use it for larger area the entire network depends on the common channel in case of link broken the entire network will become dead because there is a single cable we are using so the entire network shut down if my main cable fails so these are the advantages and the disadvantages of your point to point topology by this we complete the concept of topology the main two topology that is there in our syllabus is our star ring and bus topology so we have discussed about all the topologies we have discussed about its advantages we have discussed about its disadvantages in detail in the topology now network connectivity a small network for example if there is a group of only 30 computers you have 50 computers if you want to extend the network then the data transferring or the sharing of the network will become a problem so for example if i am exceeding each and every network has its limitation if you are exceeding what will happen a lot of problem will happen for example if a, there is a computer which is connected to the server computer you are exceeding the network so if the one computer is transferring the data to the other computer from where i have to take the print out so what will happen the response will be reduced because you are extending the network and the printing time will be also more because you are extending the network or we can say the printing speed will become slow so a small network normally grows but it cannot grow certain beyond certain limit 
it affects its performance. So, in order to extend the network, that is called as network expansion. So, there can be two type of network expansion done. If you are expanding within a network, it is called as network connectivity. If you are expanding to or more network, then it becomes inter-network connectivity. Okay, so what is a network connectivity? In simple words, a small network grows but only till a certain limit. So what I am going to do when I am going to exceed it beyond the limit, a lot of problem will occur. So without problem, how I am going to achieve the connection? That all comes under the concept of network connectivity. So network connectivity, if I am expanding within a network, it is called as network connectivity. If you are expanding two or more network together, then we call it as a inter-network connectivity. A small network normally grows, but it can't grow beyond certain limit. It affects its performance like drop in printing speed, machines response, etc. It needs network expansion. Typically, two main types of expansion are needed. Expansion within a network called network connectivity, expansion of two or more network called inter-network connectivity. Now, to expand without breaking into new parts or connecting it to the other network, some standard connectivity devices are used. So, when I am going to extend the network beyond the limit or if I am going to interconnect two or more network, we are going to use the standard connectivity devices and the standard connectivity devices are modem, repeaters, hub and lastly routers. So these are the four network connectivity devices or we can say they are the devices which is going to extend the network so that the data transfer takes place in a smoother way. So firstly in today's class let us discuss about modem. Modem, modem is a combination of two words modulator and demodulator. Why we require the connectivity device modem? When two computers are trying to transfer data to each other via telephone line, then we use the connectivity device called as modem. So modem, why we require telephone lines? Normally, if you are using computers for internet or email communication, then there will be compulsory the connectivity device modem. So, modem is nothing, it is a technique of using telephone line for digital communication. Now, why we require a modem? What is the function of the modem? The computers will be understanding digital data, but the telephone lines will be understanding analog data. So, in order to convert the data from one form to another, we are going to use the modem. And here we will also learn the main problems if I am going to connect, for example, if I am directly connecting the computer to the telephone line and then from the telephone line the other computer, a lot of problem will be occurring. And that one of the main problem will be the telephone line will be not at all understanding digital signals. So let us discuss all this concept in the mod. Modem is a technique of using telephone line for digital communication. Computers used for short or long communication use modem. Modem is a technique that is used to interconnect computers by using a very common media, telephone line. The following problems involve while directly using a telephone line. So, modem is nothing. We are going to use telephone line for digital communication. So, that technique exactly what is called as the modem. Modem is used for short distance as well as long distance communication. It is a technique which is used to interconnect computers by using a common media called as telephone line. Now, if without a modem, if I am connecting the computer to the telephone line, what will be the following pro problems? The first problem will be the telephone line will be producing a lot of electrical disturbance. Second is its bandwidth. Third, if the capacity to transmit only analog signals. The analog circuitry is not compatible for digital data transmission. So, when the digital data is being transmitted to the telephone line, the telephone line will be not at all understanding and it will not at all accept the data. A lot of electrical disturbance will be produced if you are directly connecting the telephone line to the computer for transferring data. And it can transmit only analog signal and it doesn't have more bandwidth. So, these are all the difficulties that arises when I am directly connecting the telephone line to my computers. Come this difficulty the new technique that has been employed that is called as the modem. So, 
computer store digital data while telephone lines can only transfer analog data if a computer is to be connected to internet through a telephone then it must first convert the digital data to analog data before transferring so the conversion of digital data to analog data and vice versa is called as the technique why we are using the technique to convert it into analog and digital and that for that we are going to use of the modem converting one signal form to another form is called as modulation and reconverting it to the original form is called as demodulation so as we said the modem is a combination of modulator and demodulator modem is modulator and demodulator modem is used to connect computer to internet modem converts the digital data to analog data and vice versa while using a telephone line for digital communication in full duplex communication modulator demodulator unit is both used at both ends modem is necessary at both the workstation so it is a full duplex communication now what is a full duplex communication here if i am taking two computers Computer A can transfer the data to B, and B can again transfer the data to A. So this is called as full duplex communication. The working of modem. So here I am having a computer. Two computers are there. One is C1 and the other is C2. So when C1 want to transfer the data to C2, first C1 will transfer the data in digital form to the modem. So here I am using a modem at the C1 end where the digital data will be converted into analog so this is my modem one then with the help of the proper dial code the telephone line will be selected okay so this is my telephone line so the modem will be converting the digital into analog and then via the telephone line the data will be passed it goes to the other modem which is connected to c2 computer so this modem 2 will convert this analog signal again into digital and then it will be given to computer c2 the same process will be repeated when c2 want to transfer the data to c1 this is the full duplex communication okay so you can see here modem is necessary at both the workstation in order to transfer the data from one form to the another form so this is how the modem is going to the modem process the user at computer a send data in digital form the computer a is modulating digital data into analog form the modulation technique may be fsk type that is frequency shift keying type modulator signal is within the telephone frequency range it is transmitted over telephone line by selecting a proper dial code so that it properly transfers the data to computer b the computer b terminal is selected by by its dial code the modem of computer b is converting analog modulator signal into original digital data by the process called as demodulation so the conversion of digital to analog is called as modulation and again analog to digital is called as demodulation the demodulator digital information is processed and displayed on the screen of terminal b so this is how your data is been transferred from one computer to the other computer the similar process will be repeated when we go from b to computer a so here i am taking c1 and c2 in your example as computer next comes the diagram you can see here how my computer is connected to the modem where the digital is converted into analog and the, with the help of the proper dial code the telephone line is selected and then it goes to the other end this is how your modem transfers data from one computer to the other next let us see the application of modem modem is specially designed for the modern communication and it has been very much useful it is used in fax communication chat communication email and internet browsing types of modem there are two types of modem one is the synchronous modem and the other is the asynchronous modem asynchronous modem this we have already discussed in your 11th standard in asynchronous modem there will be a no clock the data will be transmitted from the transmitter to the receiver it has a start bit and a stop bit in order to differentiate the data now 
asynchronous modem since the data transmission speed is slow the message is always kept short in asynchronous modem transmission clock is not used for synchronization instead it uses bit synchronization that is a start bit and a stop bit each frame begins with a start bit that enables the receiving device to adjust to the timing of transmitter signal and once that is initially it will be the start bit then the data that has to be transmitted and the stop bit so between each and every frame that is when the frame will be in the middle starting will be the start bit the ending will be the stop bit when the next frame of data is transmitted again it will be having the start bit and the stop bit so you can see here in the modem there is a start bit and a stop bit for data transmission message are kept short it is used to transmit character data it is simple in expensive technology it is used for pc to pc communication so a synchronous modem the speed is very less in simple words the transmitter will be waiting till the receiver receives the entire data and then it will transmit the next data due to which the process will be very much next comes the synchronous modem in synchronous modem there will be no start bit and the stop bit instead of that it will be using synchronized signal and here there will be a clock present due to the clock the data transmission speed is faster and the message kept in synchronous modem is always big a synchronous modem uses clock on transmitting and receiving device it uses a synchronization signal which is a bit pattern and can be easily recognized by the receiver of particular frequency p message are kept long a wide variety of data types can be so this is all about your synchronous and asynchronous modem you can see here in the synchronous modem asynchronous modem it is having a start bit and a stop bit here comes the synchronous modem where there is no start bit and a stop bit so let us compare when the first data is sent there will be a start and a stop second data before it is sending it will be a start and a stop third until end data but in synchronous modem starting and the ending that will be only synchronized signal so when a bunch of data has been transmitted that will be synchronized signal at the start and at the end you can see here how the data is transmitted in asynchronous and synchronous so you can see here also there are few diagrams which show you how the data is going to get transferred here there is a start bit and a stop bit and there is always a gap between the data units here there is no gap all frame of data will be sent and you can see at the sender and the receiver there is a synchronized signal present so in today's class we have learned about topology point to point topology and tree topology and we have learned the first connectivity device that is modem in this class let us discuss about the other connectivity device in detail thank you